I'm going to go to Acts 2, verse 1. It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, I'm going to say suddenly, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled, everyone say filled. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is part seven of a series we've been calling Lighthouse. And today's message, the title is, Are You Fulfilled? Are You Fulfilled? Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's begin to worship God. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in people's lives. I thank you, Lord God, we're going to end this year strong in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up every family that is represented in this place. We cancel every assignment of the enemy against every family that is represented here today. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for increase. We thank you for abundance. Father, I thank you that this is the season for supernatural abundance. I see it right now. If you've been hit in the face recently with lack... Do, do not let the enemy deceive you. You are stepping into a season of abundance, a season of harvest, a season of breakthrough. And I'm not just saying that. This is the year of the open door. You're about to step through an open door, a door that has been designed for you for years. And now this is the season where God is saying, you are ready, my child. It is time to walk through. I just see an open door. That's all I see. I see an open door for God's children. I see an open door for people that have been faithful. The season of the harvest is here. And that's the reason why the enemy wants us to get weary while doing good. But the time is now. For at the proper time, there should be a harvest if we do not give up. There is a harvest that is about to be here. I see it now. Do not give up continue to stay prayerful, continue to believe, don't doubt, don't speak death over your situation, don't say it's never going to happen, this is never going to get better, this is always going to stay the same, no, don't even give, give in to that, do not cancel your faith, do not cancel your prayers by your unbelief and by your frustration and irritation, believe because God is about to do something in your life, he's about to do something in your life, so Lord, I thank you for this special service today. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say amen. You may be seated. Woo. Matthew 5, 14. We're going to get into this. You guys to take notes. Yes. I'm going to switch mics. All right, here we go. All right. Do I sound different? All right, cool. <laughs> What was I sound like before? Not as good. All I needed to know. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Tells me everything I need to know. Matthew 5, 14, it says, you are the light. Everyone say the light. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. I have something about that, but I'll keep it going. I got to stay focused today because there's so much. I just need, I got to get through nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. As we have been teaching all series long, we are God's lamp and Jesus is our light. And when you say yes to the call, when you say, God, here I am, I'm ready to be used. God says, okay, you ready to get, get into the game of purpose? Cool. What he does is he strategically places us in different situations and different scenarios and different locations throughout our week for the intention to shine his light. And as I've been saying at, in, in different places, you know, many of us thought that once I get the house, then I'm going to be happy. You know, once I have the marriage, then I'm going to be happy. Once I have the family, that's when I'm going to be happy. Or, or once I start making this amount of money, this is when I'm going to really start being happy. Or once I gain this amount of followers, I'm going to be really happy then. Or, 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 or maybe when I get here in my career and I'm doing what I really, really want to do and I'm getting a chance to travel and do this, then I'm going to be fulfilled. 
But the truth of the matter is, is that true fulfillment will never come from things. True fulfillment will never come from this new man. True fulfillment will never come from this new woman. True fulfillment will, will never come from this daily dose of porn. Because we can search the world and everything that is in it, but true fulfillment will only come from Jesus. That's it, Jesus. And as we're wrapping up today, I'm really excited to wrap it up today. Uh, give it up for Pastor Tim, who killed it last week. You know, we're in, this, we're in the finale of a series we've been calling Lighthouse. And, you know, to wrap this up, I was praying about it. God showed me in order for us to walk in this light that we've been talking about, in order for us to really walk in this level of light, to let our light shine before people, we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. The same spirit who glorifies Jesus. The same spirit that we receive as a deposit when we receive Jesus as our savior. You see, in order to walk in this light, in order to walk in a power, in order to, in order to walk in this authority, in order to walk with confidence in our identities as children of God, we need to be fulfilled by the Holy Spirit. We need to be fulfilled by the Holy Spirit. In order for us to walk victoriously in every single season, I don't care what's happening in your life. I don't care what attacks you're going through. I don't care what disappointments come, what letdowns happen that arises in your life. You're able to be consistent with joy and peace. When you are filled and when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're able to be fulfilled in his spirit. You're able to do and be everything that God has created you to be. Period. And so I want to let you know today... And I, and I really pray for those of you that are watching, this is, this is one big point of my message. You can know Jesus. You can know Jesus, believe in Jesus, and not be filled with his spirit. As we've been talking about all year long, the prophetic word, the prophetic phrase that God has given us this year in 2021 is called level up. Everyone say level up. And there's a lot of us that have been leveling up in different areas of our life. But let me tell you the next level. The, the, the final level before the year is over is to level up in our relationship with Jesus. And so in order for us to level up in our relationship with Jesus, I have to break down and teach why is it significant to be fulfilled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you right now, the enemy does not want this message to go out. So I'm really, really excited. I want to go to the beginning. I want to go to the beginning. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about something that a lot of us probably um, have never heard it be taught before, but I want to break down fulfillment. Fulfillment. Everyone say fulfillment. This is Genesis 2-7. I want to go to the beginning. I want to go to the beginning, the beginning, the beginning, the beginning. So we look at our origin as human beings, where we come from. So we really understand the significance of why we need to be fulfilled by the Holy Spirit. This is Genesis 2-7. It says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And he became a living being. Everyone say breathed. The first human being on earth, Adam, God breathes into him the breath of life. Now I want to break it down in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, in this original text, breath in this means a hot wind, kindling a flame. A hot wind kindling a flame. So when God breathed into Adam, right? God breathes the Holy Spirit into Adam. Adam receives this spirit. He re receives the Holy Spirit. He, God breathes into him a hot wind, a flame, Holy Spirit fire. And when Adam receives the Holy Spirit, Adam becomes a living being. When Adam receives the Holy Spirit, he comes alive. He becomes alive. And many of us have been looking all over the place to come alive. We've been searching for life. We've been searching for rushes. We've been searching, if I do this, then I can come alive. If I get into this new relationship, then I can come alive. If I'm able to be in this line of work, then I can come alive. We've been searching in all these other sources to come alive, and we didn't know that the Holy Spirit had that for you the whole time. When Adam received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when he received the Holy Spirit, he became alive. 
And, 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 and really what's so interest, interesting about this is that unlike us, Adam was born with the Holy Spirit. He was born with the Holy Spirit. There was a closeness. There was an intimacy that Adam had with God. You see, through relationship with the Holy Spirit, he was able to be close. There was this intimacy. There was this closeness. And God never intended for us to be disconnected from his spirit, ever. When I look at Adam, I just want to read this again. It says that, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed. This is, this is where we come from. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, his spirit. And he became a living being. You see, this is good to study that. This is our lineage. This is our history. This is our ancestry. This is where we come from, right? This is our heritage. And so when you're able to look in the past and see where we come from, you're able to learn more about who you are today. When you understand that human beings were created to have the Holy Spirit, it makes you understand what is missing from your life. That we were created to have intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And so we're searching, we're reading all these books and we're reading all these magazines, we're online, we're seeing all these types of different people to help us. And, but it's right here. This is the first human being. This is, this is where it all began. This is where we could find the answers, that the Holy Spirit was in our lives. You see, Jesus, what happened was is that Adam and Eve, they dropped the ball because we had the Holy Spirit. But when Adam and Eve were deceived in the garden, thank you, Holy Spirit, when Adam and Eve were deceived in the garden, what happened was they fell to, to, to Satan and sin came into the world. Let me tell you what happened. When sin came into the world, it divided human beings from the Spirit of God. Human beings lose the Holy Spirit. We lost the Holy Spirit. And now when we relate to God, we have to relate to God through our mind and through our emotions. And so there was this distance between humanity and God because of sin. And so Jesus said, I have to do something about this. I have to do something about this. So Jesus came, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so Jesus comes to the cross. And when Jesus comes to the cross, he rises again. What he does is he, he pays for sin. He pays the debt of sin that we caused, humanity caused. But the reason why he did it, it wasn't just to get us into heaven. It was to get heaven back inside of us. You see, Jesus said, I need to get my spirit, the Holy Spirit, back inside of my people. Because God never intended for you and I to have a relationship with him from a distance. He always wanted to be close from the very beginning. And there are many of us who are walking in a distant relationship with God. And we've been trying to figure out why. Do I need to pray more? Uh, what, what, what do I need to do? go to church more? Do I need to stop doing this and stop doing that? You need the Holy Spirit. That's the answer. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to say this, fulfilled. Everyone say fulfilled. fulfilled. With the Holy Spirit. I'm going to break that down in a second. So Jesus explains. So Jesus is about to go to the cross, and he's about to explain to his, to his disciples the next steps. The next steps is about to happen for our purpose and for our life, and God is saying the next step for you. Look at this. This is John 14, 16. Jesus says, and I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. Everyone say, I know him. I know him. But you know him. Look at this. For he, for he dwells with you and will be in you. This is what Jesus says. The disciples at this point know the Holy Spirit. Stay with me. Stay with me, please, everybody, because we're going somewhere. <laughs> the disciples have been with the Holy Spirit this entire time because they're with Jesus, right? So, so Jesus says, you know the Holy Spirit. You know me. You know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's been dwelling with you, right? They're, they're, they, they've, been, they've been moving with the Holy Spirit, right? They, they've been working with the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said, I'm about to take this to the next level, though. Because a lot of us as believers, we know the Holy Spirit as in like he, he dwells with us. Like we can pray. We, ha we can pray to God. We have a relationship with God, right? But it's only to a certain level. It's only to a certain extent. And Jesus is saying for, to his disciples, I want to take you to the next level. You see, the Holy Spirit's only been dwelling with you. But now it's about time that you graduate for the Holy Spirit to dwell in you. 
And many of us, God is saying for you to step up into the next level of relationship with me, it is time that you invite my spirit to live in you. Amen? Amen. Everyone say fulfilled. I want to talk about this word fulfilled because let me tell you this, even for those of you who, who have been filled with the Holy Spirit, if you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, there's a difference between being filled with the Holy Spirit and being fulfilled with the Holy Spirit. Now I'm coming for everybody now, okay? <laughs> you thought you had a day off. Like, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm cool. I'm chilling. This mess, this is a mess for everybody else. Okay. Nah, this message is for everybody. There is a difference between being filled with the Holy Spirit, right, and being fulfilled with the Holy Spirit. When you break down the word fulfilled, the first part is this, or the second part, filled, you see, this is what happens when you receive the Holy Spirit. You receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? There's an evidence in, in your life. There's a prayer language that emerges from you, from your belly, out, uh, comes rivers of living water. There, there, there's, a, there's a presence. There's a spirit. You, you feel God. You know that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. But the full part, that's the, that's the other part of the word. You see, that's the, that's the half of the word that's on us. That's on us. You see, you're filled one time, but it's on us to come back to Jesus every day to get full. And many of us are filled but we're not full, we're empty. And so we're not fulfilled, we're empty filled. Empty filled, can you put that up please? Empty filled. Empty filled is a believer who has the Holy Spirit but living an unfulfilled life. It's a believer who, who has the Holy Spirit but living an unfulfilled life. Meaning that, that, that we've been filled, but, but there's an emptiness that we are living in. And because there's an emptiness that we're living in, the things that we don't want to do keep drawing us back to do it. it. Although we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we're still living in addiction. Although we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we're still addicted to this way of thinking and to this way of acting and to this way of, of just meditating on our thoughts every day. Because although we know Jesus and we're filled, there's an emptiness that is in our life. And too many people told me when I came to Jesus, oh, once you come to know Jesus, everything is going to work out for you. Once you come to know Jesus, you're going to be really happy. Once you come to know Jesus, you're going to be really fulfilled. But no one told me what, what I... No one told me that I had to keep up my end of the bargain by having a relationship with God. Like, I didn't just get married to my wife. So we get, we get married to Jesus. God, I receive you, but then we don't talk to Jesus no more. We never spend time with Jesus anymore. We never come to develop a relationship with Jesus anymore. Thank God. Do you think my marriage would have lasted if I said yes at the altar, but I ignore my wife for three weeks after that? I see my wife one day a week. Okay, we're going to spend time now. You got five minutes because I got to go to work. <laughs> And the reason why we are, we are empty is because we never come to Jesus. We never come to his spirit to be full. You see, receiving the Holy Spirit is like receiving a car, a beautiful new car. But how many do you know you can drive with that gas and we get on fire for God and we got the new gas in the car? We're like, this is great. I love God. God is blessing me. He's giving, every, giving me everything that I want. He's blessing my family. But how many do you know that sooner or later the gas starts becoming lower and lower and lower? And people think that they take one pill, like Morpheus gave, gave uh, Neo, good, thank you, been a long time since I saw the Matrix, uh, that it's just going to be a one-all, be-all, fix-all problem. But the, but, 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 the, but the thing about it is, or one-all, one be-all, fix-all solution, but the thing about it is there's a relationship every single day after that. It's on us to come. If you have a car, it's on you to go to the gas station. And if you do not go to the gas station, what signal light comes on in your car? Say it, say it. What signal light comes into your car that you see? And, and how do you know? This is interesting. How do you know when, when, when your car is empty? What do you see? Everyone say a light. You see, the enemy comes after you because you're not walking in the light we've been talking about. You've been walking in the empty light. And so when we're empty, we leave ourselves vulnerable for, for, for attack. You see, when you don't come to Jesus, when your tank is empty, Satan comes looking for you. I want to take you to the beginning again. I want to break this down. I'm really excited to show you this. This is Genesis 1-2. Genesis 1-2. It says, the earth was without form and void. The earth was empty. Everyone say empty. 
And it says, and darkness. Look at this. And darkness was on the face of the deep. It says, earth was empty and darkness. Because since the beginning of time, let me tell you this. I'm, we're going to help each other out today. Since the beginning of time, darkness has always been attracted to emptiness. Since the very, very beginning, when God created the world, darkness was always attracted to emptiness. You see, many of us, look, we, we, don't, we don't love this drug. We don't love this drink that motivates us to make bad decisions, right? Like, like we don't love this bad relationship that we keep running back to. We, we, we don't love this, this abuse that, that we are living in. We, we, don't, we don't love this, this addiction, uh, uh, to this sexual addiction to different people that causes harm to our soul. But this emptiness that we have keeps allowing darkness to pull us back. We don't love being angry. We, we, we don't love having this temper and having this rage. We, we don't love being jealous. You know, we, we don't love this, this, this thing that, that keeps drawing us, but the thing is, it doesn't matter how much we love Jesus. When you're empty and you never come to get full from the Holy Spirit, you leave yourself vulnerable for darkness to run your life. And so many of us are filled, but we're empty. You could be serving, you could be praying, you could be doing all the things you're doing, but you are empty. And when you're empty, you leave yourself vulnerable for attack. So look at this. It says that the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And it says, and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Get the Holy Spirit was hovering over the darkness. The Holy Spirit was hovering over the emptiness. Look at this. Meaning the Holy Spirit is hovering over every empty area of your life. Every part of you, the parts that are, you know are not full, the parts where you know are empty, your voids, your emptiness. I want to encourage you that the Holy Spirit is waiting to be invited to fill your emptiness. He's waiting to, to be invited to touch those places that no one can. And so it says this. It says, it says, this is what happens. It says, so the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God invites the Holy Spirit into action. And then God said in verse 3, then God said, look at this. Let there be. Come on. Help me out. Let there be light. When you invite the Holy Spirit to fill the empty places in your life, God begins to look at you as you leave your house and say, let there be. You're able to move in God's light because you have been full from the Holy Spirit. You've sat down with God. You said, God, speak to me. Even if it's in your car driving to work, God, you, you begin to pray. You begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. You, you, begin, you begin to have some time, some food with God, and God begins to fill your tank so that you can move and have the patience that you need. So you can move and, and be able to forgive people and not be so easily offended. So that you can move in a peace and a joy even in the midst of the storm because you're not just filled, now you're also full. And so when you leave a fulfilled life, people can see it. And when you leave a fulfilled life, the enemy can see it. And when you're full and filled, you literally have a protection around your household, a protection around your marriage, a protection around your, 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 your family, a protection around your career, a protection around your ministry, a protection around your business, because you're not going to fall for any type of bait that Satan got because you've already eaten. I'm preaching really hard right now, man. I, I thought, I mean, I'm not looking for man's approval, but Lord. <laughs> I want I would, I would, I would, I to take you here. I want to take you here. We're going to go Luke 4, 1 through 4. You know, uh, when I was in college, uh, I, I lived with these three roommates, and, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we grew weed in the house. Uh, let's just say that. Um, <laughs> I had a little bit of an issue. <laughs> I had a little bit of an issue, and I remember just being in this lifestyle and, and making bad decisions because I was addicted. 
I was addicted to, to this substance. I was really addicted. It moved me to make decisions that I regretted all the time, right? And we had this routine. We had our church, and our church was every single day at a certain amount of time, all three of my roommates would meet in my room, and we would meet in my room. It was our Bible study. We passed two blunts around a circle, and, and it was our, we would talk about everything. We'd talk about life and philosophy, talk about God. I mean, this was my church. This was my church, right? And this was this was what, what we did every this is what we did every day. And so, you know, I was living a certain way. I was I was doing it, and then all of a sudden I felt this God just moved me towards him every day. I just felt this 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 void. There was an emptiness that I had. And one of my friends invited me to this church and the reason why I love this church, because it was a bunch of people my age, right? And, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I didn't know people this young served God. And so I saw how they prayed. I saw how they hungered for God. And I said, I want this. And I remember they all laid hands on me. I came to this Bible study, all laid hands on me, and I received the Holy Spirit. And I began to pray in this spiritual language, and, 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 and there was an anointing and a grace that was coming out of me. And I remember, I don't know when it was, I don't know if it was the next week or sometime after that, but I remember, same old time, the fellas came in my room, and we're sitting, we're, you know, we're sitting down talking all of that, and I did not plan or think about this before, right? But in the moment, they're passing the blunt around, it gets to me, and I literally look at it, and I said, I don't need you anymore. Nobody told me to stop doing it. I didn't have a pastor to say, you're wrong if you smoke. You're, you're, this is, it's a sin. You know how we ask questions? Is this a sin if I do this? I didn't have to ask anyone if this is a sin. There was something in me that fulfilled me in a way where I said, I don't need you anymore. I don't need you anymore. And I passed it to my boy that was sitting on the other side of me. And everyone was like, like it was like the music style. Like, like, people were like, yo, are you, what's, up, what's up, man? Are you good? I'm like, you know, and I just said, I said, I'm good. I, I, just don't, I, don't, I just don't need it anymore. And I didn't come up judgmental to them or anything like that. I was just like, for me, I'm good. Like, I don't, I don't need it anymore. And that was when God showed me the power of being full from his spirit. This is Luke 4, verse 1. It says, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm about to preach this message again. Look, I know a lot of people not here today. We, we might have to just do the whole thing again. Just act like it's your first time. Just be like, amen. I never heard this before. Amen. Seriously, I'm mad. I'm, I have literally a holy anger because I'm serious. Because I know that this is such a breakthrough message. We're going to probably do this again. Probably on the 26th. I'm telling you probably right now. Look, I'm going to do it. I'll change some things up. But just expect the same message. We're about to go deeper. You still come. Still come. Okay. But we need, bring your friends, bring family. We need, look, we need, this message is powerful, man. Lord, have mercy. Luke 4, verse 1 through 4. Then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus. God, okay, 100% man, 100% God. Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. If Jesus is filled with the Holy Spirit, how much more do we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm tired of people, these, these, I mean, there's so many wrong teachings out there and, and denominations that make up stuff about, about the Holy Spirit to counsel us in the Holy Spirit. And it's really demonic because the enemy don't want us to be, you know, to come back into reunion with our power. That's really, that's what it is. It says, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, look at this. He returned from the Jordan and was then led by the Holy Spirit. Hear me out. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. As soon as he was filled with the Holy Spirit, his life changed. He represents you and I right now. His, his life changed. He's no longer on his own to try to figure things out. He no longer has to hope that he's making the right decision for his family. He no longer has to hope and be optimistic and say, well, I hope everything works out. No, no, no. All of a sudden, he steps into the game of purpose, right? He steps into the will of God. Right then and there, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then it says he was led by the Holy Spirit. In order to be led by the Holy Spirit, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And a lot of us are just trying to go through life. We're trying to figure out what to do. But, but you don't understand. Once you are filled, you are led. And sometimes, even if you are filled, you don't know what to do. And that means you need to get full so you can be led again. So, God, what do I need to do? What decisions do I need to make? It looks like you need to get into his presence. It looks like you need to eat a little bit from God. 
So it says that he returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit. It says, into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing. And afterward, when they ended, he was hungry. He, this represents being empty. He was empty. And when you're empty, darkness is always right there. Because darkness is like sharks. They can smell. Just like they, sharks can smell blood, they can smell emptiness. The enemy can smell emptiness. As soon as you're empty, that's the opportune time for the enemy to come and knock on your door. It says, and the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command the stone to become bread. It's interesting because the first sin in the Bible, that the sin that tore us from the Holy Spirit was about food. It was around food. It was centered around the food on the tree. And the devil's trying to do the same thing to Jesus. But Jesus is he's a little different. But Jesus answered him saying, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Hear me out. Man should not live on bread alone, but by every word of God from the spirit. Every word from the spirit man shall live on. You see, Satan thought he had Jesus because Satan thought he was empty. Here's the interesting thing. Satan knew that Jesus just got baptized with the Holy Spirit. Satan knew that he was filled, and that didn't stop him, meaning Satan is not afraid of filled believers. He is not afraid <laughs> of, of, of our boom shakalakas. He's, 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 not, he's not afraid. I go to churches all the time, and people praying, and there's no power. He is not afraid of people that have been filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, Satan knew that Jesus was filled, but Satan had no idea that Jesus was also full. He comes after Jesus, and he thinks he's empty, but Jesus had been eating of the Spirit, waiting for Satan to come. Yeah, I know you're coming. That's why I'm eating right now. You see, when you feed yourself in the Spirit, you prepare yourself for any attack that tries to come against you. I don't care, oh, oh, Satan, big, you know, Satan, devil, bigger devil, bigger, next level, bigger devil, all that stuff. Look, look, as long as I feed myself full of the Holy Spirit, I'm in protection against every scheme of the devil. Amen. All right, I got a little bit more time, I guess. What should I do, Lord? Should I do this? All right, I, I'll just say the first line because I, I got to go. I got I to gotta, I gotta get to this last part. John 7, 37, um, it just says, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Je- Jesus stood up crying out loud. And uh, he said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Let him come to me and drink. Jesus is your well. Everyone say, Jesus is my well. So then I'm going to go here. This is John 4, 5. And this is the last thing that I want before I close. This is John 4, 5. He's about to encounter a woman that represents you and I, and I just want you to see this before we close, okay? Here we go. John 4. It says, so he came to a city of Samaria, get this, which is called Sychar, okay? Near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. It says in verse 6, now Jacob's well was there. Everyone say well. Jacob's well was there. there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat by the well. The well represents Jesus, and Jesus is representing in this moment you and I. Jesus is weary from his journey. Some of us are weary and have been tired and have been struggling and have been just trying to make it. But the thing about it is, is that we come to church, we we listen to messages, but when we do that, we're just sitting by the well. Okay. Jesus is sitting by the well, and many of us have just been sitting by the well. It says, it was about the sixth hour, and a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. When Jesus asks you for anything, he wants to make you realize how much you need him. Verse 10, it says, and Jesus answered and said to her, this is so important. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God... And who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Let me, the first thing I wanted, the p- first thing. Jesus says to the woman, if you knew the gift of God, Jesus is, is about to break down the Holy Spirit to her. The first thing he says to the woman, if you knew the gift of God, let me ask you this. Do you know the gift of God? 
Do you even know there is a gift from God to all believers? Not just some, not a few, not sinless ones, not ones that have been in church for 30 years. All believers, there is a gift from God. The second thing he, he says, and who it says to you. You see, some of us know about the Holy Spirit, but, but there's so many different myths that make us so afraid and, uh, and not trust the Holy Spirit. But do you know where it's coming from? <laughs> Jesus is like, do you know who says this to you? It's me, Jesus. Meaning this is from me. And then he says, and you, and, and he says, and he would have given you, oh, I'm sorry. He says, he says if, who says to you, give me a drink? You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. He says to the woman, if you can just ask me for it, I'll give it to you. And I want to encourage you today, if you want to go to the next level in fulfillment in your life, the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit that you've been searching for and you didn't even know, Jesus is just saying, just ask me. You don't have to psych yourself out and, and am, I, am I doing it right? And just as a child, ask him. I want the Holy Spirit. Jesus, fill me up. Ask me. That's it. It says, the woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. What this woman doesn't understand is, the woman, hear me out, the woman is looking at Jesus, and she, she's coming out in an hour to, to, to get water, to wash her clothes, do all these different stuff, and she's, she's hiding out because she has a reputation in the village, and, and she's, she's coming out of time when no one's outside. And she sees Jesus by the well, and she doesn't understand that what is happening right here in the natural is what Jesus is trying to show her in the spirit. She's at a well with Jesus, right? But she doesn't understand that she's really standing by the well. She's looking at Jesus, and Jesus is standing by the well. Hear me out. And she's saying to Jesus, what are you doing? How are you going to get water? You have nothing to draw with. And as I looked at this, God laughed, and he pointed out, and he said, she don't even know what she's saying. She's the one that's by the well, and she has nothing to draw with. Come on. She is standing by the well, and she has nothing to draw with. And she says, she says to, to Jesus, she says, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is very deep. Well, there's a scripture that talks about the deep things of God, that the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God and reveals them to us. So what she was really talking about was is that she, she was standing next to Jesus, and his well is deep, but she had nothing to draw with because she, all she needed was the Holy Spirit. And if she had the Holy Spirit, she'd be able to get the deep things of who Jesus is. Many of us have been coming to church and coming around God, but we don't have nothing to draw with. We're frustrated in our relationship because it's like, I'm not growing here. I should be here, right here in my walk with God. I should be able to hear God more. I should be able to, to, be able to do this and do that, but I'm still being overcome by this fear, by these issues, by, by, by this anxiety, by, this, by, by these, these addictions, by these lies I've been meditating on. It's because you are standing next to the well, but you're not drawing from the well. And you're not drawing from the well because you're doing it on your own strength without the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is breaking it down, and he said, he said uh, she says, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? It says, uh, verse 12, it says, are you greater than our father Jacob? Uh, go to verse 13. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him or her will become in him a fountain. I won't say fountain of water. Jesus is saying, I am the well, but guess what? I want to put the well in you. Okay. He says, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water. If you come to me, I'm gonna, I, you're going to allow me to live on the inside of you and be your fountain. To be your well. There's a well that I want to bring on the inside of you where you're flowing in my spirit. And the woman said, sir, give me this water that I, that I may not thirst. And so Jesus wants to point out her emptiness. And Jesus said to her, well, go and call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. I'm glad she was honest because she could have lied. <laughs> Some of us would have lied. But like, oh, yeah, he's uh, he busy right now. I think he'll be home later, though. Like, like, you know, we try to cover up our, our, our emptiness with other believers. We try to cover up our emptiness to, to have this mask on, this church mask on, and we're hurting inside, but we, we don't want to let anybody know because we don't want to get judged. 
and we were just suffering of thirst and suffering from being empty. I, I, I love Jesus, but I'm suffering because I don't want anybody to know because I'm afraid that people are going to change the way they think about me. This woman was honest and said, I have no husband. I'm going through it, to be honest with you. I got things going on because she's giving herself for an opportunity to be healed. I've said this before. Jesus cannot heal the thing that you're hiding. Jesus cannot bring freedom to the issue that you are hiding. Bring it to light so that you can find deliverance. Amen. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said, you have, you have well said you have no husband. For, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. You've had five husbands, and the one that you're with is not your husband. This, this woman had this emptiness in her life, and it drew her to men. It drew her to, to, to find validation from relationships. And there was this emptiness. And Jesus begins to minister to her about his spirit. John 4, 24, Jesus says, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But many of us have only been worshiping God with our minds. That's the reason why we don't know what to pray. That's the reason why we run out of words to pray. We're frustrated because we're not tapping into power. So I can only pray for so long. I can only spend time with God for so long before I fall asleep. Oh, can I be real? I can only read the word for so long before I'm like, <sighs> because I'm doing it in my flesh. I'm not doing it with, with my bucket, the Holy Spirit, to get the water out of Jesus. You're doing it on your own, and it was never supposed to be that way. God is spirit, and those who worship him, you have to worship him in spirit. You have to have a relationship. Adam had a relationship with the Father through the Holy Spirit. And God is saying, you need to have a relationship with me through my spirit. So then this is John 4, 28. It says, the woman then left her water pot. She left it. She came with the water pot to get fulfillment. It represents the things that we need fulfillment. And it says that she left it. This is so powerful. She, I'm about to close. She has this encounter with the Holy Spirit. The thing that she had to draw with, it represents the things we go to to draw our fulfillment. It represents our addictions. It represents the things that we're tied to. It represents the things that we struggle with, right? She came with her emptiness. She came with it. She has an encounter with the Holy Spirit, and it says that she leaves her water pot to go out to tell others about Jesus. No one told her to put her emptiness down. No one told her to put her addictions down. No one told her to, to, to stop cussing so much. No one told her that you shouldn't be watching this on TV anymore. No one said you shouldn't be going to that bar anymore. No one said you shouldn't be hanging out with this group of people anymore. No one said you shouldn't be in a partnership with this person anymore. She has an encounter with the well. She has an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And naturally, just like I had the blood on my hand and put it down, she left her water pot. And when you have this encounter, as you fill yourself up, you're not going to realize the things that you've left behind. You're going to not realize certain relationships that you've left behind. You're not even going to do it on purpose. You're just going to say, I don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore. Because you're filling yourself up. Amen? She comes out to the city, and she says, come see a man, in verse 29, come see a man who told me all things that I've ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out to the city and came to him. She becomes a light because she allowed, she allowed the Holy Spirit to fill her emptiness. Next thing you know, she's a light. Next thing you know, she's telling people about Jesus. Next thing you know, she's walking in power because she filled that, that first emptiness was being drawn to darkness. But then she said, no, no, no. She has this encounter with the Holy Spirit and she gets filled up. Can you guys stand to your feet? Go to Acts 2, 1. Jesus goes to the cross, right? And he tells the disciples to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit because now it's time for them to be filled. It's a reunion with the Holy Spirit. We lost the Holy Spirit and now it's time to get it back again. When God breathed into Adam, he breathed into Adam a hot wind. It says in the Hebrew, breath represents a hot wind, kindling a flame, a fire. That was the evidence of the Holy Spirit. We hadn't seen that. Now, all of a sudden, thousands of, year, thousands of years later, it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, everyone say suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing, what, what wind? Mighty wind. The same wind that was in Adam was coming back. 
and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. But I want to go back. It filled. Everyone say filled. Wind. It filled. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of, everyone say fire. The same fire that we saw in the beginning with Adam is back again. So we see the wind. We see it filling. We see it coming with fire, kindling a flame. And it sat, and it said, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Can we come back home to where we come from? Can we be filled with his spirit? Because there's nothing else in the world that can fulfill you like his spirit, like the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Just extend your hands out. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for your spirit to come upon your people right now, to fill us up. Everyone say, fill me up. Just ask Jesus. Just ask Jesus. He says, if you pray to me, I'll send the Holy Spirit. I pray to the Father, and I will send the Holy Spirit. So let's just pray, Jesus, baptize me with your spirit. Fill me up in all my empty places. Give me a desire to return back to you, to get fooled by you, that I can live a fulfilled life. Fulfill me, Jesus. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. Overflow overpower in Jesus mighty name thank you Jesus just stay in this thank you Lord come on come on yeah come on let's begin to pray yes Lord Jesus fill us up 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 come on keep praying say fill me up Come on. Sometimes you, sometimes you got to look silly to get your breakthrough. <laughs> we can't be conservative. Lord, I thank you for filling us up right now. You said out of our belly will flow rivers of living water. There's a spiritual language that is bubbling up in your spirit. Come on. Yeah. Worship team, can you guys come back up? I want to sing, fill me up, God. Can you have that? Yeah. Yeah. We're glad to sing and fill me up, fill me up. Yeah. Till I overflow. Yeah. Come on, sing it, come on. Till I overflow. Come on. I wanna run over. Yeah. I wanna run over. Fill me up. Till I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Yeah. Fill me up. Surrender everything to him right now. Come on. made a decision. Amen. Come on. 
It's very easy, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, I'm here to tell you by the Spirit of the Lord that he loves you so much that you are his, that you are his child. If you're watching online or here in person, God is not mad at you. He loves you and he wants a relationship with you. If you want a relationship with Jesus, just say, Jesus, I believe that you died for me, that you went on the cross for me, that you rose again, that you sent your Holy Spirit to fill me up. I believe that you love me. I believe that you're not mad at me. I believe that you have forgiven me for all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's draw this week. Let's draw this week.